Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of setting up the wireless FTP transfer with your Canon R3. If you haven't watched our wireless workflow video, make sure and check it out because it explains how we use wireless FTP in our overall sports and event photography. We've included a link to it in the description below and also up on this card. In this video, I'm only gonna go through what you need to do in camera to connect via FTP through Photo Shelter. If you haven't set up your Photo Shelter account for FTP transfer, you can either watch our video on how to do this in the link below or read the instructions in the PDF document also linked below. You can use any FTP site, but Brands by Photo Shelter is what we use. All you really need to have though is a FTP site with a address and a password. The Canon R3 uses the exact same network settings menu as the 1DX Mark III. In fact, you could actually copy your 1DX3 settings to a card, move it over to an R3 and set up your R3 that way. It will save you a lot of time. What you need to do is set up your Wi-Fi network connections, which is called COM settings, and the destinations called function settings in different menus. Each of them have 25 slots allow allotted for presets. To actually use your system, you need to pair a connection and a destination together in the connection settings menu, which lets you have 20 preset configurations. I recommend that you first set up your network settings and destinations manually, then you can pair them up together in the connection settings menu with the change from list feature. That will allow you to choose your settings off of lists versus having to run setup wizards for each and every configuration. So for the first part, we're gonna go up to the comm settings menu. Go to your communication menu, which is the fourth menu, the purple one, and go to network settings and click disable and change that to enable. Then you're gonna go down to manual settings and choose comm settings. You have up to 25 different slots to save communication settings. Choose any set that says unspecified. I'm gonna to go just to number 25. And then create with wizard, configure online, select wired if you're connecting via an ethernet cable, and select Wi-Fi if you're using the internal wireless transmitter on the R3. You must be using a network that does not have a splash page. Splash pages are often require authentication or acceptance of terms before a user can use the network. The cameras can't work with these type of networks. Some of our on-campus venues provide public Wi-Fi networks. In venues with poor Wi-Fi coverage, we'll also bring portable hotspots or even a smartphone with a hotspot. We also will, from time to time, bring our own routers and plug them into an ethernet port to create our own wireless network. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do this setup on my iPhone's hotspot. For open networks that don't have a password, you can skip on to the next step. For networks with security, enter the password of your wireless network. I'm gonna choose Wi-Fi. And then I'm gonna choose my iPhone hotspot, which is right here, and enter that password. Once you've entered that password, hit menu, and then hit okay. On IP address setting, enter auto. On TCP IPv6, select disable. You will then get a message saying communication settings save to NW25, which is the menu we chose. Hit OK. The comm setting menu will allow you to edit, delete, or confirm the settings. Hit the menu button twice to go back to manual settings menu. For the second part of the setup process, we're gonna set up the function settings. Go to network settings in the fourth menu, which is the purple one with the icon, change network settings to disable to enable, and select manual settings. Select function settings, and you have up to 25 different slots to save function settings. Choose any mode slot that says unspecified. Again, I'm gonna choose number 25 and create with wizard. And then you're gonna choose select FTP transfer and FTP, and then select address setting. And here, I'm gonna enter the address for my FTP site. For photo shelter, it's ftp.photoshelter.com and then hit menu. Make sure the port number setting is set to 21, which is what the photo shelter wants us to do. You, if the port's different on your FTP site, do that. We're gonna enable passive mode and then proxy server is gonna be set to disable. On login method screen, we're gonna select that login password. So you can enter the login name you created on Photo Shelter or the login name listed on your FTP site. And then you're gonna hit okay. 
and OK. Then you need to enter that password that you created on PhotoShelter or on your FTP site. Once you've entered that password, go ahead and menu and OK. On target folder, just go ahead and choose root folder. And then now that is saved to mode 25. The function settings menu will now allow you to edit, delete, or confirm these settings. But I'm going to hit the menu four times to go back to the network settings menu. For the third and final part, we're going to finally set up the connection settings. Go to network settings in the fourth menu, which is purple. On network settings screen, we're going to change the network settings from disable to enable. Choose the connection settings menu. And you have up to 20 different slots to save connection settings. Choose any set slot that says unspecified. So I'm going to connect. I'm going to go down to 20. And instead of create from wizard, you want to create from list. Choose a setting name that's an easy name to remember for what your setting is. We usually choose a location in the FTP site. So for basketball, it might be Marriott Center FTP. Hit menu and OK to save the name. You must begin by choosing a function setting. So I'm going to choose function setting 1, select from list. And there's my mode 25 FTP transfer. Then I'm going to go to comp setting one, select from list, and there's my iPhone. This will take you back to the change menu, which you go ahead and hit the menu button once. You must choose connect and then OK to enable the connection settings. So connect, OK. The camera will now attempt to connect to the Wi Fi network and an FTP site. A solid green LAN light will let you know that the camera is connected. On the network settings menu, you can now choose connection option settings. And FTP transfer settings. On the automatic transfer setting, choose disable. This will ensure that you only FTP your selected images. On the transfer with set setting, choose enable. Exit the menu and go ahead and take a test shot with your camera. I'm going to take a picture of Matt. Wave at the camera. Review the image on your LCD screen. On the top left side of the image, you will see a set box that's not filled in. That means that the camera is ready to send an image. Hit the set button on your quick control dial or touch the set button on the LCD screen. The camera will attempt to send the image and the screen will say transferring and the green land light will flash while the image is being transferred. And that's it. Once the image is completed being transferred, a circle will appear in the empty box next to the set button on the LCD screen. The image is now fully transferred to your FTP site. One of the cool things about PhotoShelter is they have an app called FileFlow, which allows me to look immediately at my FTP site. And I'm going to open it up on my phone and look. There's Matt waving at the camera. And that's it. Hopefully that's been helpful to you. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below. But otherwise, we'll see you on the sidelines.